stories have been told of a hideous creature who appears from the darkness to utter five terrifying words. I hear you've been naughty. The story of the movie really is that Mrs. Green, who's played by Maggie Gyllenhaal, uh, has a husband who's away fighting in a war. And she's struggling as effectively a single mum to look after her kids, to run the farm that they have, and also to work in, in the village shop. Her husband's brother is scheming to take the farm away from her. It's the story really of Mrs. Green not being able to cope, desperately in need of a nanny, and um, um, Emma Thompson turns up to sort it all out. I am Nanny McPhee. Ah! I think the challenge of a sequel is it has to be the same but different. You know, I wanted to change the flavour of it in terms of the design. I thought it had a bigger emotional story. And I, I saw what I could do in the world of CGI. I'd explored a lot of CGI on Generation Kill and I love it. It's a lot about the pigs and um, the great thing was, having spent most of my career so far coming up, dreaming up ideas and people say, well, that's a great idea, but there's no way we can do it. It's too expensive. Eric Fellner at Working Title said to me, Susanna, I want you to go away and just dream up the most imaginative things you can. I uh, came up with this idea of a whole Busby Barkley synchronized swimming number with pigs. <laughs> first movie and the casting director came and said who do you want so I just went absolutely blue sky she said who do you want for Lord Grey and I said Ray Fiennes and working with Maggie Smith it was like a master class in acting and um, and then just really lots of fun working with the comedians like Bill Bailey, Katie Brown, Reese Fan. Great uh, casting director for the kids of Pippa Hall and we left no stern, stone unturned. Acer I'd loved from The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. Uh, I thought he had incredible screen presence. Eros was just a joy to discover as he'd already done stand-up comedy since the age of 11. Lil Woods was great because she, she is the real deal. She lives on a farm and has pigs of her own. Right at the last minute I was in a church hall um, near the British Museum just doing an open casting. And I put the camera on this girl and I suddenly sat up and I thought, whoa, you've got something special on screen. And that was Rosie. So that was very exciting to discover her. No! I just want to go home! I worked with a movement coach um, to teach them puppeteering skills. So in the scene in the movie where the kids hit themselves, they were taught to kind of animate their hands as if their hands had took on a life of their own. It's her! She's making us do it! Ah! Ow! Mm. Being a director is huge. You know, I'd be up at 5.30, I'd be on the set um, for seven, we'd start shooting at eight. And then at the end of the day, if you wrap at seven o'clock in the evening, your job doesn't ha finish then, uh, because I'd go and look at dailies from the day before, I'd have to work with the editor, and there'd always be some logistical thing coming up about somebody's makeup for the next day, or a problem with piglets or something, and that you're ultimately responsible for everything creative on the screen. I finished shooting the movie in September and I was on it till Easter working on the editing and CGI. So I was on the movie for two years. We went to a huge amount of trouble to make this movie, you know, two years work, people at the top of their game. And I think this, this movie really deserves to be seen properly in the way that, that we envisaged it. And by buying pirate copies, people are also taking a lot away from the industry. This, the movie industry struggles in this country and we really need new investment. We need money to come back into the industry. And it's not just, you know, the stars who need the investment. It's people very low down, the runners who are dependent for their jobs on a, on a vibrant industry here. Oh, please. Nanny McPhee and the Big Bang. <laughs>